Okay, here we'll be going over a brief overview of the urinary system and how it plays an important role in our bodies. So the first off, there's five main functions of the urinary system. First one is to regulate blood volume and blood pressure. It does this by adjusting the volume of water lost in urine and also by releasing renin and erythropoietin. These are two ways that our body can help regulate our volume of blood, but also our pressure. And this is kind of a little bit of that kind of complex system here with renin here and angiotensin and a release of hormones that can cause different changes in our body. Now looking specifically at the renin and angiotensin system, renin is an enzyme that's released by the kidneys, so part of the urinary system, in response to a drop in blood pressure, which increases the reabsorbing of water. So that's one way. We want to be able to reabsorb water in our nephrons. Renin also catalyzes the production of angiotensin, which is a hormone that causes arterioles to constrict, raising blood pressure. So think about it this way. This was our normal blood vessel. By constricting through vasoconstriction, closing that down, we're causing an increase in our pressure. This will also cause um, water retention to occur. So think about both of these systems and how they work to help the body maintain homeostasis of blood pressure. If it gets too low, what's something that the body could do? If it gets too high, what's something in contrast to what we saw before, what's way we can kind of reduce our blood pressure because we want to maintain that homeostasis. Looking at the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, we kind of have a complex process here. I'm just going to cover it in the very brief sense. We have enzyme uh, reaction, the liver releasing angiotensin into the blood, kidneys also releasing the enzyme renin into the blood. This will um, cascade into angiotensin 1 through enzymatic reactions. It's converted uh, with the ACE, the angiotensin converting enzyme, in the pul pulmonary blood. This is causing angiotensin 2. So this enzymatic reaction is causing that conversion to angiotensin 2. And this is going to stimulate widespread vasoconstriction. Remember, our arterioles are going to constrict or get smaller. This is going to stimulate the adrenal cortex to secrete um, aldosterone, which is ultimately going to cause the kidneys to start to retain more water. So it's stimulating sodium uptake in the apical cell membrane in the distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts. If you haven't looked at the nephron video, you're welcome to take a look at that. And ADH is causing the aquaporins to move to the collecting ducts and plasma membrane, which is increasing water reabsorption. So all this is kind of occurring. And this is helping the body regulate blood volume and also pressure. Erythropoietin is another one mentioned. This is a second response to low blood pressure. And this is a hormone. Erythropoietin travels to the bone marrow and stimulates the production of new blood cells. So how does this help maintain homeostasis? Another way to think about it is we're looking at our blood system. If we're low in blood volume, what's the way we can increase that? We know it's made in the bone marrow. However, erythropoietin will be the actual hormone to stimulate the production and increase the number of red blood cells. Another function of the urinary system is to regulate plasma ion concentrations. And this does occur in the kidneys. It's how much is it going to absorb, how it's going to let released into the urine. Um, so this is part of that urinary system to maintain that balance between our plasma ion concentrations. Another function is to help stabilize blood pH. This controls the loss of hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions in the urine. Where the body can help get rid of more of one or the other to help keep that pH in a very tight range. If the blood is reg regulated to stay within a range of 7.35 to 7.45 approximately, here we see 7.35 to 7.39-ish is considered normal. Uh, it's a very tight, tight range. Uh, between 7 and 8, now that's a large swing. We're looking at into the hundredths place of pH measuring. How it goes about doing that, we have our equation here, our carbon dioxide in our water and our carbonic acid, and our hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. The ratio we have of these will determine the pH. Everybody can go back and forth with this to help regulate that, to maintain the proper homeostasis. In addition, the urinary system will help conserve valuable nutrients. It can prevent um, excretion uh, of waste products if there is a deficiency, or it can increase excretion if there's determined to be an excess of nutrients. Again, a way that we want to stay in this kind of green optimum nutrition, that homeostasis, we need ways to reduce things if it gets too high but also bring them up if it does get too low. 
Lastly, we're looking at the urinary system will assist the liver to detoxify poisons, particularly amino acid metabolism. So there's called this uh, things called liver detox. There's detoxing recipes. People go on a very simple diet. Uh, to help detoxify poisons, but really it's the urinary system on a continual basis, uh, that particularly the amino acid metabolism, uh, is what the urinary system needs to do to help out the liver. The amino acid metabolism, um, remember amino acids are building blocks of our proteins, not needed for building protein that can be metabolized for energy or broken apart in carbon, carbon chains used to make fat. Within our amino acids, we have this variant R group, our carboxyl group, our hydrogen in our amino group. This can be broken apart, particularly the nitrogen, and that can accumulate, and that can be of um, toxic levels, potentially, within the body. Looking at nitrogen in particular, uh, if ammonia is generated, that is toxic and highly water-soluble. We want our body to be able to break that down and convert it, and the liver is where this occurs, converting this toxic ammonia into urea, which is less toxic and less water-soluble. Both of these, believe it or not, are fertilizers that we see applied here. We see a strong nitrogen um, component. And hydrous ammonia is one thing that's applied in a large part across the country. And urea is also a form of a nitrogen fertilizer. So the body wants to go through this process when it breaks down amino acids, it will generate ammonia. It wants to go through the additional process with the assistance of the liver to convert that to urea. And that will be then carried in the blood. And in the kidneys, urea and other water soluble waste are converted into urine, and that can then be excreted from the body. Ammonia also gives off a strong odor. Uh, urea being that less water soluble and less toxic, ideally would be converted, helping reduce the stresses on the body and easily excreted in the body's urine.